Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. If you have not been here before, thank you so much for being here. I post about all things graphic design and I post about website design. I post lifestyle vlogs. I pretty much share it all. So definitely make sure to subscribe and stick around. But I'm super excited to jump into today's video where I'm gonna be showing five super quick tips that I wish I knew before becoming a website designer. Starting with number one, branding must always come first. So I've gotten this question so many times before on if I require my clients to have like a branding guideline before I start their website. And the short answer is yes. I do like to make sure that I have at least a good idea of the branding before I begin. And if the client doesn't have the budget or maybe they aren't quite ready to invest in branding yet, then occasionally I will offer to combine the branding and website package in a specific sort of package price, but I really have to have that branding before I begin the website because think about it. We are going to have the buttons. We're going to have the sections. We're going to have the fonts, all of the things that I need to know consistent on the website. And I want to make sure that that is going to be something that they'll be using in their actual business and the branding and their social media and things like that. So branding must always come first. And I would definitely recommend that for any new website designers that you make sure that you're going to be using consistent colors and fonts and all of that throughout not only the website but everything that you'll be creating for this client. Number two is making sure that I use and take advantage of the grid alignments and understanding white space when it comes to website design. I think that it's so easy if you've been designing for a while that this becomes sort of subconscious to us knowing like the basics of design. But the reason that I like to mock up my website designs before I go and develop them is because I like to understand the kind of like rules of thirds and the grid and understanding like the sections and how they're aligned. And it's really nice to have like a Figma website design where you're able to select multiple things and align them perfectly. And when it comes to developing the Figma, sometimes you have to adjust that a little bit, but at least you have an understanding of where to place those sections and the overall white space involved. And when I say white space, that's basically making sure that you're leaving enough room around the image, enough room around the text, that it's not butted up against the edges of the website and that it's not overlapping with anything because it's something so simple, but that can truly affect the way the website is used and seen and the way your users are going to engage with it. So definitely make sure to understand the rules of thirds, the white space kind of rules in graphic design and understanding how to implement that in website design. And like I said, utilizing those grids that the mock-up platforms will allow you to use like Figma. Third tip is to make sure that you have call to actions always visible. I think that I've gone on so many websites and it's so confusing on what it is that the action that the website wants me to take. So making sure that you have the button, whether that's add to cart or contact or learn more, visible on any part of the website. So what I recommend doing is having every section, having a call to action, even if there's no button, at least having that content in the copywriting guiding them to take that action you want them to take. So this really goes into the user experience and understand like what it is that the client and the audience is going to be looking at. So definitely make sure that you're driving the audience to the spot that you want them to go to in almost every section. And if not, at least not too far of a scroll down the page. Number four is to understand all the skills required to become a website designer. When I say website design, I hesitate because it's not just design, it's development, it's copywriting, it's SEO, it is coding a little bit. It's knowing all those things and knowing that that is what it takes to make a really effective and efficient website. So I think that when I started, I didn't really understand that website design is just one portion of it. I just jumped into all of it. I'm really thankful that I did because I was able to learn a lot really quickly but it's really important to know that it's okay to not know all the things. I feel like I didn't know that either when I started that you can outsource the development or you can outsource the copywriting. So don't be afraid to outsource it to people that are experts in those industries and making sure that you're adding that into the package price and making sure that that's accounted for when the clients work with you. But take that pressure off, really hone in on the areas that you're good with, which is, 
probably design, development, whatever it is, and making sure that you have those outsource and those contacts of people that you can reach out to if you get stuck and you need to make this website even more powerful. The fifth tip that I wish I knew before is the amount of website platforms and the platforms that I like to use. This is a question I get all the time. What platform should I start on? And this actually question comes a lot from the clients. They don't know if they should pay for Squarespace or pay for Show It or WordPress or Wix or whatever it is. And to be honest, as a website designer, and if you're gonna go into this field, you have to know how to educate the client on which platform will be best for them. I've struggled with this in the past because I feel like every platform has a lot of pros and cons, and it really comes down to what the client is comfortable editing. But knowing those pros and cons and knowing what it is that you like to work on is really going to help you show up and know how to sell your services with website design. So I typically prefer WordPress. I do like show it, but WordPress is my go-to. It's where I learned website design. It's where I love to design and I know that I can do anything on WordPress. Whereas websites like show it and Wix and stuff like that, it's still a little bit not super customizable. It's definitely customizable, don't get me wrong, but I feel like there's still some things that aren't fully possible and that would require a lot of extra money. And I don't always wanna to have to make my clients pay for specific plugins and themes and add-ons and stuff like that. I wanna do it from scratch and I want to be able to provide them that at no extra cost because no one likes to pay more than they really need to. But overall, understanding the platforms that are available to the client and that you prefer to work on is super important before you even get started. I'm also very thankful that I took a good amount of time to understand the platforms before I started offering this as a service because when I jumped into the graphic design world, I was able to learn directly with someone that was using WordPress for the company, but I also practiced with my own website. I was using my website on WordPress, I've tried Show It, I've tried Wix, and I've also played around with Squarespace just for fun to see if that's a platform that maybe I want my website to be on. But I ultimately have come to that decision and I really truly believe that it's so important to understand the platforms and what it is that each of those offer. So those are five super quick tips that I wanted to share with you all that I wish I knew before becoming a website designer and that I wanted to share with you all if you're just getting started or maybe you're considering adding this to your list of services, then I hope this was super helpful. I do have a website course, go check that out if you wanna learn more about WordPress specifically. But I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it so much if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And I will see you guys in the next one.